The very first thing I want to say about cleaning your tank, don't go crazy trying to clean your tank. Okay? Dial it down a notch. Let's go. Obviously, we aren't going to use that kind of stuff to clean our tanks, but I wanted to over-exaggerate just to drive it home that our tanks are not like your typical household items that need to be spick and span. It's okay to have a little bit of dirt, a little bit of grime, a little bit of sludge, because all of that is actually living, breathing life, keeping our tanks sustainable for fish. With that being said, step one is gonna be start scrubbing some algae away. Before I tell you why this is such a great first step, let me first welcome all you new guys to the channel. My name is Kev and this month is beginner's month. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's final video of the series. It's gonna be a doozy. Now cleaning a tank is always gonna involve a water change, but it isn't just about changing the water. This is why the first step we're gonna do is scrub away some algae. As you can see, I'm starting with the side panels here because this is where most of my algae is on the glass in this tank is on the side panels but like i mentioned earlier i'm not gonna go crazy and try to take every single speck of algae off also keep in mind algae is a living breathing thing and it's actually contributing to helping your tank stay clean algae is a plant that can provide the same benefits as many other plants like reducing nitrates helping to oxygenate your water it's even a little bit of a snack for some herbivore type fish by focusing on scrubbing away most of the algae now what we're doing is removing it from the surfaces that it's attached to and getting it free into the water column before we start removing water. Now while on the side panel, I use this brush type thing. On the front panel, I use my mag float. I tend to use my scrub brush just for that more stubborn type of algae that I really gotta put some, some oomph behind it. With the mag float, you kinda have one set pressure and it is what it is, but it'll get the job done just as well. When it comes to the core, you can scrub the algae off your decor as well. As you see, I'm trying here, but there's not really that much algae on my background or on my few pieces of rocks. If you got a bunch of decor and you are seeing heavy signs of algae, you might wanna take them out of the tank, give them a good scrub down as well. Does that have to be every single water change, every single maintenance? No, you can determine how often you wanna take that out and do that. Next step in the process is gonna be vacuuming your substrate using a siphon tube. First thing you should know about siphoning is how to create a siphon. Put one end of your hose into a bucket onto the floor below the tank, dip your Siphon tube angled upwards into the tank, let it fill with water. Bring it up out of the tank and let the water drain down the tube. Before it's all the way drained, put it right back into the tank, fill it with water again, and that's it. Your siphon is going. Check it out. Water in the bucket, as long as you keep it under the tank. Before I get going, let's talk about what the purpose of vacuuming even is, right? Fish poop a lot, and most of that poop is gonna stay hanging out in your substrate. So if your filters can't get it out of the tank, then that's what you need to do by vacuuming. If you let that poop accumulate in your tank, you're gonna get spikes in nitrate levels. You're gonna get cloudy water from that organic waste breaking down. You're basically just letting your guys swim around in their own poop, and that's nasty. Now let's talk about the technique. As you can see, I have sand as a substrate. When you're vacuuming sand, you basically just want to brush the top surface of the sand and try to pick up any waste that's sitting up on top of the sand. That's one of the benefits with sand is that most of your detritus is going to be sitting on its surface. If you got gravel on the other hand, you want to do a different technique. With gravel, you're going to want to dig your siphon tube down into the gravel to pull the waste and detritus that's stuck underneath the gravel. I'm going to demonstrate how that looks like with my sand but you don't want to really do this with sand unless you know what you're doing the reason why my sand isn't getting sucked all the way up through the tube and down the hose is because i'm kinking the hose stopping the siphon and allowing the sand to fall back into the tank i'm actually using this opportunity to move some of the sand from one side of the tank which is very abundant over to the other side of the tank where it's basically a bare bottom tank this is all due to my wave maker but we'll get into that in a second so what i'm doing here is letting the tube suck up all the sand then I kink the hose, which will stop the siphon, and then all the sand falls right out of my tube. The only thing you'll do different with gravel is that you won't kink your hose. When the python tube sucks up some of that gravel and dirt through the tube, as soon as you lift the tube up and out of the gravel, the gravel itself is heavy enough that it'll fall on its own. 
but all that dirty water will continue up the tube and out of the tank. I'll put a card up in the top right corner for a full detailed video on that process. Check it out if you need more help. Now you might have noticed that my substrate wasn't really that dirty to begin with. And some of you might even remember that I don't really vacuum my substrate at all anymore. Remember that wave maker I mentioned earlier? Well, take a look at that card up in the top right corner and you may never need to vacuum ever again. Okay, it's draining time. And most of you know, I like to use my handy dandy Vavison 2600 gallon per hour pump. This is the fastest way to drain a big tank by far. And it's my go-to every single time there's water change time for all my big tanks. Now I'm aware that most of you don't have a huge tank like this. So some of you aren't gonna need this draining step because you've already drained enough water from your tank while you are doing your vacuuming. If you are one of those people, go ahead and skip ahead to the timestamp below where we'll do the next step. For those of you that do have a huge tank or you understand the benefits of doing really big water changes, then stick around, we're about to get into it. Very first thing I do as the tank starts to drain is turn off my wave maker. The last thing you want is a wave maker emerged, still running, drying up and burning out. So turn off your wave makers if you're doing big water changes. And because I'm doing a big water change, I also need to turn off my filters because I know that the water level is gonna drop below the filter intakes, leaving them emerged. So I let the tank drain for a little bit just so I could get a good look at the pressure of the outputs from the FX6s. But well before that water level even reaches the intakes, I'm closing those valves and turning them off. So I first close the inlet valve on both FX6s and the reason why I do this is to trap the siphon in that inlet valve so that when I go to restart the FX6s, the siphon is still there and the filter fills up no problem. After closing the valves, then I go ahead and power down everything. Heaters, lights, filters, nothing has power, everything is off. Yes, I forgot to scrub some algae off my glass tops, but again, I'm not going crazy trying to go spick and span. I'm just scrubbing the really, really thick stuff off while the tank is still draining. So some benefits of big water changes real quick because I've been through this a few times. In a tank like this with African cichlids, overstocked, can't keep plants because they destroy them. The only plants in the tank is a little bit of algae. You're going to get high levels of nitrate very quickly in the tank. And the best and quickest way of removing those high levels of nitrates is by doing big frequent water changes. If you're in the African cichlid world, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not, this may seem excessive to you, but just understand every tank is not going to be the same as yours. You may be able to keep live plants in your tank. You may not have an overstocked tank full of big, huge fish. So you don't have to do as big water changes or as frequent. But even so, I still highly recommend doing big water changes because you're also replenishing essential minerals back into the water, which are depleted because the fish have used them up. I am lucky enough to have a slop sink right in my own fish cave. And all I have to do is connect my garden hose to this one line here. And then I turn on the hot and cold, mix it up so that it creates warm water. Yes, temperature is a factor, but you don't have to go crazy trying to match it perfectly. So it's fill up time, super simple, right? Well, hold on a second. Even though I've already got my water line set up, if you're gonna fill up with tap water, like most of us are gonna do, you must dechlorinate that with a water conditioner. I use Seachem Prime or Seachem Safe. Either one is gonna be good to go. Safe is in powder form and much more concentrated, usually used for bigger tanks and Prime is used for smaller tanks. Prime is also gonna remove a lot more heavy metals than Safe does, but either one, you'll be good to go. Make sure you dechlorinate before you add that tap water in. Water. As you saw, immediately after adding the Prime to the tank, I turned my water source on and started filling the tank. Why? It is perfectly safe to add Prime directly to your tank for the entire water volume of your tank. But Prime is a reducer and it is gonna reduce your oxygen levels that are in this remaining water. So as soon as you do dose that Prime, turn that tap water on and start filling right away, just to be on the safe side. I should also add, it's perfectly safe to add Prime or Safe directly to the tank. Let's say for some strange reason, you don't have a slop sink readily available. I'm just kidding guys. 
<laughs> but I do have ulterior methods of filling up your tank. If you can't connect a Python to your sink and reach the other end to your tank, I have a great way of filling up the tank using the same Vivicin pump that we drained the tank with. I'm gonna put a card in the top right hand corner. Check that video out, it's gonna be super helpful. Now, because I keep African cichlids in this tank, there are a couple of things that I need to add to this tank. First one being Malawi buffer. I add this buffer directly to the tank as it's filling up right away to prevent any fluctuations in pH. As long as there's buffer in the water, it's gonna keep the pH nice and stable. This 210 gallon takes six tablespoons of Malawi buffer right into the tank. I like to throw it in the corner where the new water is coming in just to help mix it up. Later on, as the tank fills up past the intakes, then I will add my cichlid lake salt. And the reason why I do this different is salt does not dissolve from the tank. Whatever salt you put in the tank is gonna stay in the tank. So I don't wanna add the salt required for the entire volume of water now while the tank is still filling down here. I'll wait until at least the filters can come back on so that the filters can mix up that salt and they're not staying in a higher concentrated level of salt for a longer amount of time. So what do these buffers and salts do? Malawi buffer is going to increase your KH, which essentially is gonna keep your pH nice and high. And the cichlid lake salt is gonna add minerals to your water that is going to raise your GH and keep the water hard. A perfect scenario for African cichlids. Now you do have other options to keep your pH high without needing to use Malawi buffer. You could use aragonite sand in your tank or crushed coral. Both of those will release the minerals needed to keep your pH nice and high and stable. In my case, this tank has black diamond blasting sand, which I really like the look of it. But unfortunately, this sand has no capabilities of releasing minerals into the water. So I decided to add some crushed coral into the tank. I don't know if you can see it, it's underneath one of those rocks there. But I also add the Malawi buffer just to make sure that the pH stays stable. So when we get to above 50%, the intakes are underwater. I like to turn my filters back on and then go ahead and add my cichlid salt. For my 210 gallon tank, I go four tablespoons of cichlid salt right into the tank when the filters come back on. Throw about half on one side, half on the other. Now, is this the one and only way to do this? Absolutely not. Some people prefer to dissolve their salts and their buffers in a tote or a bucket before adding it into the water. That's okay too. I've always done it this way and haven't had any problems, so if it ain't broke, I'm not gonna fix it. Last but not least, I like to add my cichlid trace into the tank. This is an industrial sized gallon here. That's why it doesn't have the typical labels. But I've been dosing my African cichlid tank with cichlid trace for years and I saw a significant improvement in their color and I've never stopped ever since. So does that mean you have to dose your African cichlids with cichlid trace? No, if you don't want to. But I saw the benefit in doing it and that's why I've never wanted to stop. Trace is just trace elements of more essential minerals that they need to thrive, be healthy, be happy. I want my fish to be happy. Close enough. Some people are gonna say I add a lot of stuff to my tank. My first reaction to you is, these are African cichlids. You gotta do different things when you keep fish that are not typical, normal, everyday aquarium fish. And number two, if you like the way my fish look and the way my tank looks, then try using the stuff that I use and doing the methods that I do. If you don't want to, then don't. The choice is always up to you. And then the wave maker gets submerged, so we turn that bad boy back on. Yeah, and squeeze in here. There we go. And the wave maker is gonna help mix up some of that salt and get it dissolved in the tank. At this point, you're probably wondering why we haven't done a filter cleaning in this cleaning video. Well, because this is a beginner's month video, I'm assuming that you guys have brand new, young, immature tanks. And when you have young tanks, you do not want to do a filter cleaning on the same day that you're doing your other tank maintenance. This is due to the potential loss of the little bit of beneficial bacteria you might have if you clean too much. In your case, you want to separate your filter cleaning days from your water change days. This is not to say that this is always the way. Once your tank does mature, 
once it is cycled, once it has an established colony of beneficial bacteria, then there's no problem cleaning your filters and doing water changes on the same day. Especially if you have multiple filters, you can simply clean one filter and do your water change, leave the other filter untouched, and your tank should be fine. Now, depending on what type of filter you have, this video in the top right hand corner is going to tell you exactly when you should clean your filter. Oh my God, it's Windex. Not the end of the world, guys. Spray your paper towel away from your tank, two or three little sprays, and you'll be fine, trust me. Just stay away from the top of the tank. Immediately after the fill up, the water's gonna look cloudy because it's got all of that product still mixing and mingling in with the water. We'll give it some time to dissolve, and just like that, the tank will look like this. Boom, about 30 minutes later, we're right back to crystal clear looking water, happy and healthy fish. Now I know what your next question is gonna be, how do I know when I need to do this kind of maintenance? That's gonna be that video right there for you. But next week's video, the final video of this series, that one right there, I'm gonna drop a major announcement that every beginner in the hobby is gonna be ecstatic about. I cannot wait, don't miss that video. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Thumbs up, see you on the other side. Peace.